Good morning, everybody. We got a 3828 crawl space mud slab we're doing today. So we just need to pour it, both will finish it, and we're out of here. It's the end of December here in Maine. It's pretty chilly. It's about 25 degrees this morning. Gonna, it is going to get up above freezing and then stay that way for a couple days, but right now it's cold. Got a little bit of snow down here last night. They did have this covered, so we took the cover off, put some black plastic down, and we're just going to pour over that. We're using a 3,500 pound mix. It's got hot water in it. We've got mid-range water reducer, so we can pour a pretty loose slump. We did put a little, we did put a little accelerator in it just to give it a kick. But gonna get going. The creek's almost mixed up. This is what they had it covered with, this reinforced poly. Then they put a heater under it to keep it heated. This guy's got a little bit of water, waterfront. Looks like a lobsterman over there. All right, guys, so like I said in the title, we're using a high-range water reducer here, and this is the one uh, the company uses, Haley Concrete Adva high-range water reducer. I'll have a link for it down in the description so you can check it out and just see, you know, basically why we use it every day. Um, there's no sense to kill yourself with low-slump concrete when you can put an additive in the concrete, pour it nice and loose. You know, if pouring loose isn't going to affect your pour any, and you can still maintain strength, then... Um, I mean, that seems like a no-brainer to me, and that's why we use these water reducers every day. Either the high range, like today, or just a mid-range, you know, and, and they do charge a little bit extra per yard, a few dollars extra per yard. So, I mean, that does add to the cost, but if, if you're using, if you're pouring concrete every day like us, it really reduces the labor cost. So, <laughs> and it makes, you know, it doesn't wear us out, you know, pouring every day, all year long like this you're just going to get worn out so it's just uh you know for us it's what we do you know it's a decision you have to make if you want to try it or not we don't really feel any difference in the mix whether it's in there or not so if you're wondering you know does it make the mix more sticky or how does it finish or stuff like that we don't notice really any difference i mean I've been pouring concrete for 42 years so i i was pouring and finishing concrete way back before they ever used this stuff and honestly it actually in most cases i would say it actually makes the concrete even easier to finish than than i what i remember back before we didn't use them now when they first came out i don't know this was way over 20 years ago when they first came out a lot of a lot of people called them super plasticizers also that that was some pretty sticky ugly concrete to finish i thought anyway it just it just made the concrete very, very difficult, very sticky to the bull float, very sticky to your hand trials. Uh, but nowadays, like I said, we don't even notice the stuff's in there. And when you're just pouring flat stuff like a floor like this, um, I mean, why bother pour a four or a five inch slump when you can pour a seven or an eight? That would probably test out stronger than the four or five inch slump. So I'm, there are, we don't, you know, where we do a lot of residential stuff, we don't get a lot of testing done, but we do have some occasionally on some jobs will be spec'd and the testers have to come out and make cylinders and all that stuff. And it tests out like a 4,000 PSI concrete will test out at 4,500, you know, at 30 days. In seven days, it'll test out at like 3,500. So we know that the stuff works as far as strength even though it does look really really wet now this load here this one this guy got it you know about a i don't know i don't know what that would slump out to it's pretty wet um but it's well within range for the for the high range water reducer whether it's an eight or a nine slump i don't know um and then you'll see on the second truck he he was a little bit he was a little bit drier probably a slump or two drier and we just left it like that because it was still it was still really uh workable pretty easy to use we're gonna we're gonna end up using a power screed on this too so you'll see how a power screed will still work on slumps list loose they don't just sink in out of sight um, 
you know, with three quarter inch stone with a fiber mesh in the concrete and everything, it still it still pours out just fine. I kind of I wanted to leave this in real time to give you a, just a pretty good idea of you know the time it takes to get a truck dumped out. Now this guy is dumping a little bit slower than what we wanted, but we had. When they laid that black poly down, they had all kinds of seams in that poly and they didn't tape it. So we were just kind of being a little bit careful with not trying to get concrete underneath the seams and, and just making a mess out of that poly. So we didn't get we didn't do any of the setup here. We were just hired as a sub to come in here and just pour and bull float finish this. They want to get decking it over on the, you know, the very next day. Lumber's been there. They've been waiting on weather. The weather's been kind of cold. So we finally got a, a day where it starts out chilly, but it's going to get above freezing today. And then it's not going to get below freezing on this night and stay up above freezing for the next couple days. So we've been, we've been struggling. Like I said, it's late in December here in Maine. Um, the average high temperature is right around 32. And then the average low is probably around 20, I think, at night. And we definitely don't want to pour on any frozen ground. So, you know, if you pour on some frost, it's just, you're just asking for trouble down the road when things do warm up and that frost does eventually let out. You're just going to get a hollow spot under your floor and your floor is probably going to settle. Luke's down there. He's magging edges now. We did... We did... Uh, we got a laser set up as you can see well maybe you can't see it but we do have a laser set up it's on that back wall kind of straight across from the video angle here there's a little laser set up and we did use that we shot our dirt grade first we got an average it, it was I don't know inch and a half or so out of level so we just took an average and we raised the grade up four inches from that marked the wall we snapped a chalk line in there and that's what Luke's magging the edges to to give us a pad out there on that edge to go by and then I'm gonna use I'm gonna use the grade stick there you get that little that little stick I'm running the shoot the stick behind me leaning up against the wall has the receiver on it from the laser I got that set right at floor height so I'll use that to make some wet pads in the middle and we're gonna strike them off just with the magnesium screed a 14 foot magnesium screed that we use when we screed by hand We'll strike off our pads for that to go by, and then we use the power screed after that. So that's kind of the process we use. There is some thickened areas in the middle they got for lolly columns. That was sucking up quite a bit of creep. I didn't think that window, the window you see in the foundation in the back is just about right exactly in the middle of this. That was 38 feet from front to back. And it's 28 feet wide, so it figured around 13, 13 and a half yards at 4 inches. I ended up getting 15. I'm glad I did because, you know, I didn't have a chance to come down and check this out beforehand. I just relied on the, the GC sent me some pictures of what it looked like. And then he told me that the grade, he thought the grade was pretty good, but... I always take that with a grain of salt. You know, what they think is pretty good might be out two, two or three inches. What I think is pretty good is if it's within a half an inch. You know, and I like, I'm a even a little bit more fussier than that, but if I can show up on a job and shoot the subgrade and it's within a half an inch, I'm usually pretty happy. But that's rare. I'll be honest with you. That's pretty rare to find that. It just seems like most guys just want to barrel that stuff in there and you know close enough is is a lot of times the attitude and then we come down to pour a four inch floor and the the subgrades out two to three inches well now i got to try to get an average of four inches over that and it's just don't it just doesn't work very good we don't you know we don't show up and expect to rake out the excavators work you know when when when, when you pay an excavator to come down here and get the subgrade in you exp I at least I expect him to use a laser to get it in, get it level, get it compacted, and get it within within reason. You know, I think within a half inch to three quarters inch is within reason on something this size. And if it's not, then you know we're not gonna we're not gonna spend our time to rake it out. We'll either ask the guy, hey, what do you want us to do? You want us to go over it the way it is, or do you want to get the guy back to fix it? 
and that's kind of how we handle that because we we have enough concrete to pour we don't need to be you know fixing other people's work and I don't think you guys would either how do you guys feel about that in the comments I mean it's one thing if you don't have any work you don't have anything to do the next day then yeah you can spend half a day raking this out and fixing it I guess and then I don't know are you gonna just hope that they pay you you're gonna you're gonna charge them for that um, what are you gonna do I mean I've been there I've been there and done that before and sometimes they'll just they just don't they don't want to pay you and then you know obviously I don't go back and work for those people but now now we, we just stop doing that you know because they some guys will just take take it for granted take advantage of you and expect you to do it on every single <coughs> Excuse me, <clears throat> on every single job, and that's just not what we want to do. So this is how we strike off our pads in the middle by, by hand, and we the reason we do it by hand. We, you could use the you could use the power screen to do this, but we just by hand. Um, we know the pads that we're going by, like magging the pad uh, to the chalk line on the on the outside. We know for sure that that is good and flat. And sometimes when you have a power screed with a vibration here, you know, you want to be careful about starting off and stopping and you might have a tiny little bit of a low spot or maybe a high spot. So we just like to strike things off by hand and then use that to go by. Because once you start that power screed like that, you want to just keep moving it backwards, slow but sure. And let the rakers do most of the work as far as filling in and pulling back. We did get this we did get that a little bit low that's why Darren was there he was pushing quite a bit up in there there's nothing like really super fast about running a power screed I I'd say if we were hand screeding this versus power screeding it would it would probably about the same amount of time you might be able to hand screed it just a few seconds faster but overall it's going to be about the same the good thing about the power screed is, you know, it only takes one guy to run the power screed, and if we had to, just one guy could rake behind him, and they could still get that done just as good as if two of us are raking behind him. So you can kind of get the screeding done in, with two people versus three if you had to. It is a lot easier with three, though, with two guys raking, and that way one guy can just concentrate on one side of the power screed instead of running back and forth that is that is you know that slump right there whatever it is seven eight whatever you guys think it is that is a really good slump for that power screed it just makes it does make screeding that stuff really really easy I mean there's basically little to no effort for the guy running the screed and for the two guys raking it's it's pretty easy too as you can see whether you got to push it up or pull it back We don't see any, we don't really see any bleed water too. When you use a high range water reducer, remember the, the additive, the additive is making it so you don't have to use a lot of water in the mix. So it's what's, that's what's making the concrete loose. So even when you pour on plastic like this, you know, if you were pouring this wet without the additive, you'd have a ton of bleed water. You'd already be seeing bleed water right now before you even bow float and you definitely see a lot after you bull float when when we got done you'll see at the end of the video when we got done all you see is like like a sheen like a shiny sheen like a moistness to the surface but no actually no puddles of bleed water or anything like that so that's exactly what you want to see especially if you're going to end up power troweling something like this you don't want you don't want to have to sit and wait for bleed water to dry up you can see how smooth that that floats out if there were any humps or dips in that you'd be noticing them right now you can see how it's nice and flat all right well this is the first truck down I don't know I don't think it went quite halfway that window is halfway I did order a couple of yards extra I knew they had some of those deeper pockets for lolly combs so and he did fill that first truck filled most of them so we'll see, second truck's backing in right now. Not much access in here, just one little driveway. Room for a couple pickup trucks and that's about it. 
concrete doesn't feel very warm today either. I mean, it should be, that stuff should be steaming. It's so hot, but you can barely feel any warmth on your feet. I know it is an hour and a half drive down here, so I'm sure it does cool down a little bit, but still, you should see steam rolling out of the back of that truck, that hopper right there. I don't see nothing. And you pay for, you pay eight bucks a yard extra for hot water. You know, you expect it to at least be warm when it shows up. So, <laughs> might have to talk to him about that. So this one's a little bit what I call drier. Probably a six, between a six and a seven slump versus a seven or eight like the other one. But it still moves around really good. That's about the slump we like right there. The other one, the first truck might have been just a tiny bit wet for us, even though even though we got the high range in it. But once you, once you get it that wet, you can't you can't just take it out. You gotta you gotta use it anyway. But it went all right. This guy's running a little bit faster. This is about the speed we like right here. Get these things dumped out. Now, like I said, the cost the cost of the high range is, you know, between, I think it's between, it's around six bucks or so a yard. So, 15 yards cost, what, about 90, about 90 bucks for the high range water reducer on a job like this. Now to me that's definitely worth it. If I was if I was pricing this job for somebody, you know, if the homeowner calls me or a general contractor calls me, I figure the price for the floor, you know, so much a square foot for the floor. Let's just say it's let's say it's two bucks a square foot for labor, two bucks a square foot for four inches of concrete. You know, I'll just add I'll just add, okay, I got 15 yards. I know it's going to be 90 to 100 bucks for the water juice. So I'll just add that to the price. Same way I would add like fiber mesh, about eight bucks a yard for fiber mesh. So, you know, you got about $120 in fiber mesh for reinforcement. And then anything else, you got to add, you know, hot water on a job like this, eight bucks a yard for hot water. So you just... I just add in all those incidentals and it's not so it, it's not coming out of my pocket it's just part of the job and I guess you can say well what if you know if they're pricing against a guy who doesn't use it aren't you gonna be higher well yeah I mean but that's just the way that's just the way things is either the you know number one it's gonna come down to who usually who can do it first and what your reputation is that should have something to do with it if you if they know you or not or if like us on this job the guys that do the foundations here they don't do their own floors they hire us to do all their floors so we'll probably do we probably do 200 floors like this whether they're smaller houses like this or big two three thousand four thousand square foot houses so we probably do about 200 jobs for them a year um, so i mean they don't even ask for price and on a job like this you know they price it out they price it out with a general contractor and then uh, if we do do any extras, they have it written in their proposal that any extras will be added to the cost. So, and that includes, you know, winter stuff. Like this this job was probably planned to be done in, I don't know, let's say October, I bet. Everything's been a couple months behind. Um, so, all these winter charges, you know, the hot water, high range water reducer, stuff like that, that's all going to be added extra. And, you know the, that the GC has to take that into, into account when they're putting their final bid in, but it doesn't come out of our pocket. We just, you know, they just want us to get the floor done, get it done right, kind of not have to babysit us. You know, and they trust us to do to do the right the right thing and get the job done the way it's supposed to be. So we're kind of lucky that way. See how that vibration, that vibration brings the paste right to the surface, kind of settles, kind of settles the aggregate just a little bit. And that's what makes the bow float so easy on this stuff. Gives you a real nice smooth bow float. You can see over there to the right on the first, on the first truck where I already got it bow floated. You see that sheen I'm talking about. 
Um, there's no real puddles showing up. I mean, sometimes, sometimes we pour on poly in the summer, and you know, if we don't use if we don't use this stuff, and you pour a five and a half, six inch slump, you just the water. Sometimes the water just bleeds out of it, or if it if it rains, let's say it rains the night before and the uh, aggregate and the sand and stuff are sitting outside the batch plant and they put it they put them in the bins and then they batch that that really damp wet aggregate out sometimes that stuff will want to bleed a little bit more than if it's dry and that's just a nuisance it's a nuisance to finish i mean it's not so bad pouring but it doesn't always want to just dry right up on you that's what I mean about see I can I can finish bow floating while Luke and Darren go ahead and start screeding and then you know if I had something else to do let's say I had to go back a truck in or get a truck mixed up or something I could go do that and them, them two guys could finish that bay right there on their own just fine That's a 12 foot board on that one. And that's the gas powered MBW Screed Demon. We also got the battery powered one. They both work really good. We, we typically use the battery one a lot. And the reason we're using the gas powered one is when the concrete companies, they start using hot water and then you put accelerator in the mix too. Sometimes, sometimes the the mixes, the floor, like right here, when you dump it down, you'll have, you'll only have, really have minutes, minutes to get it screeded before it starts setting up on you. And what we found was the, the gas powered one right here has a little bit harder vibration, if that makes sense. It kind of vibrates more, I guess. And the battery one is more of like a hum. And it, I mean, it still vibrates, but it's a, like a softer vibration. And when the when the concrete starts setting up on you pretty good, you definitely want a little bit more vibration to get it screeded flat. Otherwise, otherwise the board just kind of wants to float over the stuff if it's too stiff. The three of us, we've been doing this a long time. I've been, I've been, I think I, you know, I started my business when I was about 20. I'm 57 in this, in this video. I've been doing it since I was 15. So I've been doing it a really long time. I did work as a teenager all through high school. And then I did go to a vocational technical college for a year and found out that really wasn't for me. I didn't want to do that. I'd rather be out making money. <laughs> So I went back to work for that same person I started with for a little bit longer and then I just figured, you know, hey, I wanna I wanna I wanna do this on my own. So I just went out on my own not knowing anything. But I figured it out over the years and then, you know, Darren's been working for me. Darren's the furthest one over there. He's been working for me twenty seven years and Luke, I don't know, probably around twenty. So the three of us been working together a long, long time. We all live in the same town. Luke and Darren, they're not brothers, <laughs> in case you're wondering. A lot of people ask if they're brothers, but they're not. They're, they are best friends, though. We're going to screed that right down to the very end. That guy, he's got, a, he's got a pretty big opening in there for just being a crawl space. Usually it's just like a four foot open and just, you know, enough to kind of like a big door opening. Not That's kind of like the size of a garage door. We ended up being just a little bit high in there. I had to take, ended up having to take just a little bit out with my come along. And then I could get that mag floated nice and smooth right there. Get it both floated, then mag floated. So I would say, you know, out of the 15 yards I ordered, I would say I used at least, at least 14 of them. I don't think, I don't think we wasted too much concrete here.
All right, well, we ended up having plenty, so that's the finish right there. They're gonna, you know, they'll put the the first floor deck on will be right here at this height, so there'll only be about four feet of crawl space under there, just for storage. So we don't have to finish it any better than that. That'll be perfectly good enough for that. And we're gonna wash up, get the tools washed up, get it loaded up, get out of here. Thanks again for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.